I'm Dr. Russell Wynn. Um, I'm here at the National Oceanography Centre and I'm Chief Scientist of our Marine Autonomous and Robotic Systems Facility. So the aim of exploring ocean fronts was really to take um, a series of new robotic vehicles that we've purchased um, and basically send them out into the middle of the ocean and put them through their paces collecting data in a real environment to see um, how they work, how they respond and what sort of data we can collect with them. And this would include unmanned surface vehicles um, that um, move along the sea surface and submarine gliders that oscillate through the water column and collect data from, from beneath the surface as well. So the Exploring Ocean Fronts project had two phases to it. The first phase involved a fleet of vehicles being deployed from the Isles of Scilly and going out into the open ocean up to a couple of hundred kilometres offshore um, over a period of about two weeks. We wanted to target an oceanographic feature called a front and these are typically sort of tens of kilometres in scale and they separate water masses in the ocean with very different properties and at the front itself you often get concentrations of plankton and other um, marine life so we deployed five vehicles, three surface vehicles and two um, submarine gliders. We would typically tow or carry the vehicles out on a small rigid inflatable and then we deploy them a few miles offshore once they're away from the islands um, and they worked offshore for a while to the northwest of the islands and then we sent them about 180 kilometres offshore to a site where there was some fixed moorings attached to the seabed that are continuously collecting data and we were able to run the vehicles around those fixed moorings for a few days just to calibrate the data collected by the mobile vehicles with the data collected using a more traditional mooring. When we deployed the vehicles, um, we had a control centre here at the National Oceanography Centre with a big screen where we could see where all the vehicles were, we could see their location, and these surface vehicles in particular, we can track them all the time using um, satellite communication. Uh, and what that enabled us to do was to see um, how the vehicles were moving through the environment and if there was something interesting on a satellite image we could actually send one of the vehicles over to go and look at what that satellite image was picking up and collect some really good high resolution data from that area. Um, one of the most interesting aspects of the project was straight away, this was early October when we deployed the vehicles, we had a big Atlantic storm came in and, and hit the area we were working in and each of the different vehicles were affected by the stormy conditions in different ways. We had winds up to 75 miles an hour, we had waves up to 20 feet high. One of the vehicles, the surface vehicles, was disabled and had to be recovered, but the remainder of the fleet carried on and actually one of the vehicles um, actually was able to carry on collecting data through that storm as if nothing really had happened. It was, it was really impressive. So once we'd recovered all the vehicles at the end of phase one, we took three of the surface vehicles to Plymouth and this was coordinated by our partners at the Marine Biological Association with the aim of tracking fish that were carrying little acoustic um, pingers. The objective of the project was to uh, locate fish by listening devices attached to uh, unmanned surface vehicles. The Sea Enduro followed the MBA Sepia research vessel out with the fish on board. The Autonauts and the SV3 wave glider uh, were towed out using a rib. So each transmitter uh, attached to a fish has a unique ID code and the uh, receivers on board the vessels, the robots and the landers on the seabed that we deployed a few weeks ago are listening for those unique ID codes. So each fish is individually known. The principal use of that data is to test how well protected areas that have been set up uh, by the UK government how well they protect these commercially important fish from fishing because all the fish that we've tagged, so the 85 that are out there at the moment, half of those will be caught probably within two years. And the objective of this is to really test whether marine protected areas can sufficiently protect animals such that they can be used as a tool for the sustainable management of those populations. So the main findings of the project were that we um, have learnt an awful lot about the kinds of data we can collect with these new robotic vehicles. Uh, and I think one of the key findings was that actually to do this properly you need to work in partnership with lots of other organisations. Getting the vehicles in and out of the water requires local support and knowledge and boats. Um, using the products like the satellite information and the weather information really help guide how we plan the mission each day. Um, and also sharing expertise around how you pilot the vehicles in different weather conditions, how the vehicles respond um, to their environment was key. And by sharing all that, we're really well set up in the UK to do projects like this in the future um, with this partnership that we formed.